Hello. Today I am going to show you how to create something like this. On the home button, I have this group that says my macros and I have this my number button that allows me to do this. When I type in a number, I can select the same number and then click this and it automatically formats it for me. I'm going to show you all the steps on how I was able to do that. Okay, so the first thing to do is to create a macro. Of course you can write the macro and assign it to a button, but I'm not going to show you how to write it from scratch this time. I'm just going to record myself a macro really quick. In Excel, I'm going to click on the View tab. Then I am going to go ahead and go into the Macros and select Record Macro. This will give me an opportunity to name the macro and also description, but the most important part, it allows me to store the macro in my personal macro workbook. This is how these things work. Okay, I'm going to fill this out and I'll come back really quick. Okay, I'm back. I call this P number and it's going to be still my personal macro workbook and I wrote a description here that I'm going to go ahead and create a macro that does this sort of formatting so that this kind of number right here is formatted as this kind of number right here. And if I have more than the amount of numbers then it will always grow on the right hand side but it always keep these last four digits and the, before that the three digits. Okay, I'm going to click OK and immediately it's going to start recording everything I do on the screen. Make sure you don't click anywhere on the spreadsheet. Make sure that you only click what I'm showing you to click. So the first place I want to click on is Home. Then I want to go to the General pull down menu and select More Number Formats. In here I can select Custom, Highlight general right above the highlighted general and then type how I want to format this number. So it's going to be two digits, then three digits followed by a dash and then four digits. If I have more than these numbers then it will grow to the left. Alright, let's click OK. Notice I have not clicked anywhere on the spreadsheet. Super important. Now click on the View tab, select Macros, and stop recording. Now, why did I make such a fuss about not clicking on the spreadsheet? Is because once you click on another cell while you're recording, it will only format that cell. So it's important that you don't click on any other cells. Okay, so we have a macro. Let's see if it works. I'm going to type some numbers and I'll come back to test the macro. Okay, I sprinkle a couple of numbers here just to show you how this would work. I'm going to go ahead and click on this number and go to the View tab, Macros, View Macros. This shows me where the macros are for all the open workbooks. Now I want to go ahead and run it. Just press Run and that does it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one. View Macros and run it. Okay, so it's working no matter what cell I choose. I just run it and it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. It's leaving these two sets of numbers, the three and the four sets of numbers, on the right hand side and it'll grow on the left. Great. Okay, now let's go ahead and see how we attach it to the Home tab as its own little group over here with an icon that you can click on instead of going to View, Macros, click on the macro and then run it. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. To do so, I am going to go ahead and right click on this area. You can also click anywhere on the ribbon, as long as you're in the ribbon. Right click, and then go customize the ribbon. This is going to provide you with Excel options for customizing the ribbon. From the pull pull commands pull down menu, I'm going to select macros. This shows me a lot of macros that I've used on this version. Here I have the one that I want to take a look at. It's personal XLSB exclamation point P number and I want it to be here. In order to have it here on this tab I need to create a group. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new group by pressing new group. Then I'm going to rename that group by calling it my macros. You can call it whatever you want as long as you don't use any numbers at the beginning or any special characters. And spaces are allowed but I don't like to use spaces. So I'm going to click OK. Next I'm going to grab my personal macro that I have here and I'm going to put it inside that group. 
because basically I just created a group inside the home tab. So I'm going to add that in there. I'm going to rename it though because I don't like this long name. I like my name, which is P number. I'm also going to select the shield because I used the shield last time. You could also use any other, other, other icon. I'm just going to use the shield again and then click OK. Once you click OK one more time, this little group is there and you're able to do the following. I'm just going to reformat these so they're general numbers and now I can show you that my button does exactly what I want it to do which is to format these numbers in the way that I describe. That's how you create a simple macro for formatting purposes for the number and that's how you attach it to the ribbon in a group as a button. Now of course you have more macros then these little icons become smaller and smaller the bigger that can is, it just means that you have more room to put some stuff. And it will grow, obviously, if you have more. And you can also remove the current buttons over here, but I don't recommend doing that because not everybody likes to do that. The last thing to do it is to go ahead and actually save the macro so that you can use it over and over and over. Now, we did assign the macro to a button already, so it seems to be okay and it works okay, but we do need to do an extra step. The extra step is this. I'm simply going to go ahead and close the workbook I'm working on and it's going to tell me if I want to save. I'm going to say don't save. But also it's going to ask me if I want to save my personal macro workbook. For this I do need to say save. Because when I open it again, Excel is going to go ahead and open when I click blank workbook. It is going to go ahead and allow me to use the same button again because it's saved on my personal macros workbook and then I can just close it and then I don't have to save this and then it'll go ahead and go away what's that you use a Mac well I'm gonna show you how to do something similar in a Mac later on all on tight and thanks for watching